Have you ever looked at one of these things and asked yourself, what the heck am I supposed to do with that thing? Others of you may know what it is and are intimidated by the Smith chart. Well, you shouldn't be, and I'm going to show you how to use this tool to interpret complex impedances. Welcome to the House of Ham. I'm Bob, WV7W. I had a viewer ask me to describe the Smith chart, so today I'm going to do just that. But before I do, if you have an idea of something you would like me to feature, you can either leave a comment below or you can go to my website at this link and describe your idea. This link's also in the description below. Smith charts have a certain level of mystery to them for many hams, almost like it's some sort of mythical beast. But fear not. I'm going to help you tame that beast and go over how to read the Smith chart and interpret the meaning of what you're seeing. The Smith chart is named for its creator, Philip Smith, who invented the chart while he was working for Bell Telephone Laboratory in the 1920s. The Smith chart allows us to visually plot complex impedances. Now, you may have seen one of these equations here, like 43 plus J15, particularly those of you who've studied for the extra exam. This used to befuddle the heck out of me because I'm about as far from a mathematician as you can get. But it really isn't that hard, though. The 43 is the purely resistive part, or in math, known as the real number. The J15 is the reactive, or in math speak, imaginary part. Why do we use J instead of I? Well, in electronics, we use I to denote current, so they substituted J. Okay, on to the Smith chart. If you look at the chart, you notice that it is a big circle that is divided horizontally with this line. This line is the pure resistance line, and the spot denoted with a 1.0 is known as the prime center. We normalize this to our, to our system impedance, which is typically 50 ohms. Now, if we move to the right to 2.0, that would be 100 ohms. If we move to the left to 0.2, that would be 50 times 0.2, or 10 ohms. As you go all the way to the left, you see it corresponds to zero, or a short circuit. If you go all the way to the right, corresponds to infinity, or an open circuit. Now, either zero or infinity equates to an infinite SWR. Each point on the pure resistance line has a corresponding resistance circle. Now, anywhere along this 50 ohm resistance circle has a resistance value of 50 ohms. Now, let's talk about the reactance part. You know that stuff after the J? Everything in the region above the line is inductive reactance or positive and everything in the region below the line is capacitive reactance, or negative. The reactance numbers are around the outer portion of the big circle, and there are corresponding arcs for these as well. Those numbers also get normalized or multiplied by our system impedance of 50 ohms. The line down the center is where there is zero inductive or capacitive reactance, or resonance. Notice that the SWR can be anything between one to one and infinite. And this is a good depiction on why resonance does not equal a one to one SWR. Now let's plot our example of 43 plus J15 on the Smith chart. First, we need to normalize these numbers so we can plot them. So 43 divided by 50 is 0.86, and 15 divided by 50 is 0.3. First, let's find the 0.3 reactance arc, and then the 0.85 resistance circle. And we'll go just a little bit past this circle to get to 0.86. When we find the intersection between the 0.3 arc and the 0.86 circle, we have our point on the chart which shows us 15 ohms of inductive reactance. Now, to measure our SWR, we take the distance from the prime center to our point, and we transfer that line down to the SWR portion at the bottom of our Smith chart, and voila, we have our SWR of about 1.4 to 1. 
So as hams, when we would we actually want to use a Smith chart, say in setting up an antenna? The truth of the matter is you probably won't. What it does do for us is gives us an understanding of how the resistive and reactive components of our transmission lines and matching networks impact our impedance and SWR. One more thing you can use the Smith chart for is to see how changing the length of your transmission line can impact your complex impedance. You see the scale going around the outside, the outer says wavelength toward generator, and then the next one says towards load. Basically, as you rotate around this chart halfway, it equals one quarter wavelength of transmission line change. Now, in this video, Alan W2AEW explains this way better than I can, so check out his video if you want to know more. And I've also put a link in the description below for that. You can also use the Smith chart on your antenna analyzer, or nano VNA, to help you set your manual tuner. Knowing if you need to add or remove inductance or capacitance can be really helpful. And being able to visually see what is happening as you're dialing those knobs around can be enlightening. Now this was just a quick scratch of the Smith chart surface. There's a lot more to it. If the subject interests you, take a look at Larry W0QE's videos where he gets much more in depth and shows you how to use the very cool program called SimSmith. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please hit that like button. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing. And here's another video you may find interesting. Until next time, 73s.